My name is Michael Croft. I'm the UNESCO representative in Vietnam. Um, I've been working for UNESCO for 22 years and it's, I'm just starting my fourth year in Vietnam. I'm liking it very much. Very happy here. How would I describe the festival? I would say that it is vibrant, inspiring, innovative, young, fresh, and of course, great. Well, we did it. We were a co-organizer last year. Um, and actually, this, uh, the initial initiative was, of course, coming from RMIT. Uh, but when RMIT came to us with the idea last year, because it was, it was a nice timing with the city's application to the UNESCO Creative Cities Network, we thought that this was a, a really great idea. I, I think for us, and I think it was also a little bit the same for RMIT and everybody who's been involved in the festival, it's also it's a learning opportunity for us because we're getting to know more about the creative environment that, that, that's out there in Hanoi. Um, these are organizations and individuals we want to be working more with. So the festival is kind of a good way of, 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 of bringing everybody together and allowing us to, to, to have that, those sort of interactions that we'd like to have over and above um, actually doing the festival itself. So for us, uh, we're a little bit of a matchmaker. I think, and so we, we, we provide that, um, we, we, we make connections to a certain extent. And we're, all, we're, all, we're also very much interested in, in these connections because we're interested in this ecosystem and how it, how it works. So for us, we hope that having UNESCO participation adds a little bit in terms of the visibil visibility, but it's also very much of ensuring that um, this gets to play the role that it needs to play within the wider framework of Hanoi as a creative city. There are two real aspects, I think, which, which, um, which need to be discussed here. Uh, the first, of course, is the fact that Hanoi joins an international network. Um, Hanoi joins a, a vibrant network, an established network uh, that has an established framework of cooperation. So it's a way for the city to um, build new relationships and also build on relationships it already has. Uh, for instance, uh, if we look at other creative cities of design, uh, UNESCO Creative Cities in Design in Asia Pacific, we have Kobe, uh, we have Seoul City, uh, we have um, Budang in Indonesia, um, Singapore, so that it, it, there's, a, there's an established network that's there. Also internally though, I think that it's just as important. It's a way for the city um, basically to, to help mobilize all those different energies and actors that are there um, under the creative city umbrella. There's a lot of people doing really good work in Hanoi right now. But one of the issues is, is that sometimes different initiatives don't really know about each other. Creative City is a way of, of bringing these things out and, and making introductions so that, in a way, all this good work can move in the same direction and can, can connect up. And then you can see, realize the synergies between these different things. I think that for UNESCO it goes back to that strategic role that we, that we play. Um, and by this I, mean, I just mean that UNESCO is really in a unique position because of our relationships with government, with the private sector, with universities, with international partners, with other UN agencies, uh, with organizations and individuals in the city. Um, we really kind of ourselves represent a network. And so our ability is kind of, in a way, that of a matchmaker. We sort of have a, a bird's eye view of things. The city is very much the center of the initiative, but to a certain extent, we can kind of very much see the, the ecosystem. So our role is not so much about providing resources. Um, the city and the private sector have a lot of resources for this. And also, neither is it really about providing expertise, because the expertise, there's a lot of expertise um, in the young people of Hanoi, in the private sector, uh, also in the universities. Our role is to, is to provide matchmaker, to be a matchmaker a little bit, to see the different synergies, the possibilities and opportunities that can exist, and to help 
facilitate these partnerships to, to, to help different partners meet each other and realize the synergies that, that can be that can that can that are there that exist. So I think that that's really in where we see Mexico's role. Well, I think if we look at the case of Hanoi, I mean, we see a very rich cultural heritage. And it's a city, I would say, and I'm not the only one, I think, with a cultural soul. We feel that. I mean, the first day you're in Hanoi, uh, even as a foreigner, you feel that. So there's a legacy to build on. Um, that gives the, the city a certain credibility. It makes sense. If we talk about Hanoi as a creative city, uh, it, 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 it makes sense intuitively to us. But I think that um, it's also important that we, we remember that, 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 that culture is born of creativity. So that, that rich cultural heritage means also that Hanoi has a heritage of creativity as well. And, um, and also a lot of that, that, that cultural heritage at its time was probably created by young people. So that gives the, the, the foundation is there, if I can say that for the city. Also you see um, the important network of educational institutions, all the different universities that are in Hanoi. Um, that, that give it a, also a, an edge, because the universities and education play a very important part in, in creativity. And then I think that we have also, if I can put it this way, Hanoi in terms of what we, what we see, um, what we see, so the visual identity of Hanoi. Uh, there are very many uh, historic properties here, historic buildings, um, which have, have had a cultural purpose for a long time and look to be restored to have new cultural purposes for a new age. So Hanoi also looks different um, than other cities. If you take all this combined, um, that's why we think that uh, we talk, often talk about from creative city to creative capital. So the vision moving forward is to, is to establish Hanoi as a creative capital, to use the creative city designation um, and to build on that to realize Hanoi's potential in terms of its creativity. I think if we look at an individual, creativity is a lot about, it's very human. It's a, it's a human impulse. We can't be very happy um, on, unless we're, we can express ourselves. And, and, and creativity is, is a big part of that, about how people express themselves. And it's the same for a city and also for, for a country. I don't think anybody wants to live in a city where everything is always the same and there's nothing ever new and it's not, and it's not vibrant. So creativity is really, um, when we see a creative city, we see a city where um, where people feel engaged, where they where they where they where they're happy about where they live, um, where they feel invested in terms of, of where they live. The production of all that, or the, or the product of all that, of course, is good for the economy um, because creativity doesn't just produce new cultural industries, but creativity has an effect on every different sector around it, from from technology to tourism. So economically, it's um, it's, a, it's a good benefit for the city and also for the country. But the other thing, so we have had, we have we have in a way this this, this sense of togetherness, uh, economic benefits, but also image. Um, it's very important uh, because, and this is where the design comes in, uh, that, that 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 a country that a country can say that things are designed. We want to we want to we want to to reach a time when we say that. You know, we talk about things being not made in Vietnam, but designed in Vietnam. And I think that we only have to look um, at the success in the last decade that we've seen in the Republic of Korea and what they've done with the cultural industries. Yes, that's been incredibly um, beneficial to them in terms of economics, but also the image. I mean, we look at, we look at Korea, Korea has a new global image now because of that. And this is also another big potential of creativity and design for the image how people look at Hanoi, how people look at, at Vietnam, and how people perceive Hanoi, and how people perceive Vietnam globally. Um, so there's a, there's a lot of benefits to be engaged in this space. Like everything else, it's how the designation is applied. Um, in joining the network, Hanoi joins um, basically a group 
of like-minded peers, different cities in the region and, and internationally, who have also decided to use creativity as a way to advance sustainable development. So in linking up with this formal network, Hanoi opens um, up the possibilities for new information exchanges and new and the exchange of also ideas with these different cities. So it can, it can build on the relationships that it already has with other cities and open up new ones. Internally though, the designation acts uh, as both a narrative and also a platform for collaboration. Um, what it does, how it, do, or how it does this is that basically by the city um, saying that this is, this is the way that we want to go forward, it's uh, all the, that, that good work, those different initiatives that are happening in the city right now, obviously want to say, look, we want to contribute to this. So it draws things out and by that it, it, it exposes different initiatives in the city to each other. So it, it, it really opens up the ground for new opportunities and new synergies for development in the city, especially in the creative space.